Good morning, everyone. You might hear my child in the background, or one of my children. And today, we're working on making a second grow-out bin. Um, shortly, I'll go over some of the, the required and optional tools that uh, are needed for this. If you can't tell, it is riveted together, or the mesh is riveted in place after cutting holes. And we'll go over cutting the holes, or measuring the holes, cutting them out, and getting everything together. Here we go. Alright everyone, so this is made from a 100 quart or 25 gallon uh, hefty storage solutions tub. You can get these at Lowe's, they're $25 or so. The tools you're going to need for this project are a pop rivet gun, a ruler, a fine tip marker or marking device of some sort, a pair of scissors, you're going to need some pop rivets, you're going to need a drill with a 3 16 bit on it, uh, you're going to need some sort of fine tooth uh, cutting implement to cut the plastic. I'm personally using a zip saw like this with the fine toothed half moon blade on it. And if you have the, um, the money or if you're planning on doing several of these, save your wrists and your hands. And instead of getting one of these, go somewhere like Harbor Freight. It's very cheap. Um, and well cheap is, is in $40 but it it saves your hand so much it's very worth it and buy a pneumatic uh, riveter if you don't have an air compressor obviously that's an expense an additional expense and therefore you don't want to buy this and you definitely can use this I've actually the first bin I made I used using this but by the end of it, my hands and wrists were killing me. So th that is, this is a quality of life implement. It is not a necessity. Now, beyond this, you're also going to need quarter inch hardware cloth. And you'll also end up needing half inch hardware cloth for the lid and the feeding trough. All right, everyone, let's get to work. For our first piece of hardware cloth, you're going to need four pieces, and they need to be roughly nine and a half inches by eight and three quarter inches long. Uh, you'll find that the mesh is not perfectly quarter inch. Um, the machine just doesn't make it perfect squares. Um, use your, your metal shears, and it goes very quickly. And we'll move on to actually marking out the locations on the bins and um, getting ready to cut those uh, places out for these squares, okay? All right, everyone. Now, with the mesh that we've already cut out, we're going to use it to create a template for um, drilling holes and cutting out our um, bin. Now, I've already got this marked out underneath, but we're going to go up one and over, and we're going to mark a square. And we're going to come in one, two, and mark an L shape. And we're going to go up roughly halfway, and we're going to mark a, uh, another square. And we're going to come up to the top and go in one and down one, mark a square, and come diagonally two, mark an L shape. We're going to do this across the entire border, roughly halfway on the bottom, roughly halfway on the top, the corners here, as well as the middle, and then the L shape there. And what happens is that it creates a shape. These holes are our drill points. We're going to drill a 3 8 inch hole for our rivets to go into. And this center section where we've made the L's is going to be the removed area that will be the ventilation hole for our, um, for our bin. All right, so let's mark this up three more times and we will get ready to drill and insert our mesh. Here we go. All right, so you can see through the bin that we now have one, two, three, four holes marked and ready to be cut out. 
Now I will say that I'm not going to automatically drill these holes out because each piece, I use a single piece of hardware cloth to um, draw these out and each piece of hardware cloth is a bit individual so I will use the hardware cloth that is used for that specific area to drill the holes but I used just the single piece to cut this out or to set up the diagram for this. Now uh, let me set up and get ready to cut this out and I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our four holes, we're going to use a ruler or some other metal sharp edged object. Uh, and we're gonna take our a ruler and we're going to scrape at about a 45 degree angle. And we're gonna use the metal ruler to actually knock all of these burrs off of the edge. And it just helps to create a cleaner, cleaner edge, better look. And it also helps the, um, the hardware cloth to lay flatter. So I'm gonna get that done real quick and then we'll get on to placing the hardware cloth. All right, we're down to the final piece for the basic box. Um, now, when you're drilling this plastic, if you're not careful, you can and will split it due to just the nature of this plastic. So if I were you and you aren't used to drilling on this plastic, which a lot of people who do this them do these types of things themselves, they are, um, mainly because your snake bins and everything else, if you've drilled holes instead of melting holes, you've learned the feel for it. But use the plastic that was cut out of these squares as practice. You will um, take let, ha, give gain some experience and not risk ruining the um, the bin because once you have cracks, you've then got to drill more holes to patch those cracks so that way you don't have an escape uh, escape route for your rodents. Let's get these holes drilled and I'll. Uh, and I'll show you how to attach the, the mesh. Now when drilling these holes, never use the marks. For this piece of mesh I can because it's the mesh that I use to make the marks, but always use the holes themselves on the mesh and use the marks as a general guide because the machine that makes the mesh will not, uh, or is not perfect. They're not perfect squares. So you'll, you, there's going to be a little bit of variance in each one of these squares. I use almost no pressure when I'm putting these in. I use the weight of the drill and the sharpness of the, of the drill bit to cut through the plastic. All right, now that we have these holes drilled, let's get this riveted in place and so I can move on and do the rest of these and have this been done for today's video. All right, let's get this mesh put in place. We're gonna need eight pop rivets. I'll do one with the, with the actual handheld method, and then I'll do one with, uh, with or the rest with the pneumatic to show you what it is, or to show you how much easier it is. Now, the reason why a 3 sixteenths is so important is because it, 3 16 actually matches 
with the rivets themselves. So we're going to take and we're going to put the rivet through that hole just like we, we had already planned. And this is on the inside of the tub. We push it in and we squeeze. And you might have to do this a couple times. One more time. It's going to make a loud pop. And now this is secured. Now, let's use this hydraulic riveter and do the rest of these. It'll line everything up. Now that that's done, this is installed. Now do keep in mind, the mesh is on the inside. The rivet heads here are on the inside because we're trying to hold the mesh in place and we're blocking rodents from getting to this edge and being able to chew on it and chew their way out. It is secured all the way around with no gap large enough for a rodent. Now I'm gonna continue and get the last of these done and that'll be it because tomorrow we're going to cover chew proofing because if you notice this ridge here there's ridges down here and we have to cover all of those up so that way rodents can't chew through them all right let's finish this up We have four large size holes with screens, well secured in place, and tomorrow we'll be going over cutting the pieces to block these ridges, as well as these ridges here, and covering the lid to make things as chew proof as we can and keep the rats in where they belong. All right, everyone, have a great day.